This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. So we've got us quite a few cases here that are warm all the way up to about here. Come in, I found one of the solenoids and you can see coming in there warm liquid. It's the solenoid and it doesn't continue forward. That solenoid is not on and you can see that it's not happening. And this whole length of cases all pretty much are warm. One, two, three, total of four cases. I need to go back and see. I haven't done much at this store. I know this one's like a really old one. Yeah, you go to the back wall, you're 50 degrees back here. You come up here to the air bands, which we've got two sets of air bands on this thing. Which, all right, so I'm gonna go and see if we can find the compressor room and take a look back here. Uh, it says here T-stats are all in the canopies. We want A8, so we want rack A, circuit eight, rack A. So coming over here, this is AS. That looks like B, some, some amazing stuff. A8, there you go. There's eight. This thing basically don't tell you a whole lot of anything. It tells you the compressors are running. It tells you some basic, that's about it. So here's eight. It's on a sort valve. We are energized. And it's not really coming back cold. That's cold, that's cold. So we're working on the sort, or on the sort valve is open from what I see. And bar is eight. Look at them, they're all at angles. Ding, 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 ding. Here's eight, so here's this one. Feels warm there, so it's trying to go out. There's no liquid line valves on any of those. Uh, it's gonna be timed off defrost. These here are actually hot gas. See how the hot gas can come in after the uh, sort valve. This slams shut. Hot gas goes into there, goes to the suction line, comes out around the TXV, comes back on the liquid header and dumps back here onto this thing right here, which is a liquid header. I think our problem's gonna be out there. We've got side glass that looks a little shoddy. Not a real surprise. That's generally how these racks are ran. They ran as low as you can get them. That way, if they go get a leak, you'll know right away. So I don't believe we got an issue with the, the refrigerant. I think it's an issue with the thermostat. Here's defrost clocks. I replaced that motor back in 2029. All that does is makes every one of these turn. Each one of these are timers, just like a regular defrost clock. Ding, 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 ding. So you've got a total of whatever there is here, 15. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Go figure, right? We'll end up erasing that with just one or two little boards. Make sure we're not in the defrost. Find number eight, which you would think that suction stop would be potentially closed. Kind of hard to tell. I'm not real good at this part here. because This kind of sucks. All right, there we go. That's 10, so obviously, so there's eight. Come on, four defrost, and it does not look like we're in it. So let's go out there and see if we got an issue with the solenoid um, not getting power. All right, so we're back over here and you follow that wire. The wire goes on into the next case. We just got done checking voltage. I do not have voltage, so it is not energized. I pulled the lights out, looked up there, and I don't see it, so this thing's going across there. I really don't want to get into those eggs, but we might have to do it. I'm going to go grab my camera and see if we can see in there. Until we find it, I'd love to get this refrigerant flowing because we're pretty warm. And we got macaroni salad and stuff like that that could spoil. Let's see what happens. I'm not hearing the usual click. There's a stem to manually do it. gas is coming through. We're gonna go ahead and let that flow like a river and get some temperature going down. Um, like I said, we need to find out where that solenoid's at. We got this 
right there in there just in case it kicks on that way it doesn't burn up the coil it is getting cold so that was one solenoid for the whole thing also I ended up pulling this over a little bit and use my mirror and I can see this comes up down in here uh, I don't know if it's guards going after that we're gonna yank this off and see see if that thermostat's maybe hidden down in here right there's the trap door to the pit so coming across here lift this up because there's wires dangling and the wire comes through that wall right there and it ties into some other wires I don't know if this is even on a thermostat it makes me wonder you see the color it used to be okay so one wire goes to that bundle and there's a blue wire it kind of goes right there it goes all the way down there I'm wondering if that blue wire goes to the thermostat that might be maybe in the middle I don't know I mean really you wouldn't need a thermostat if you're using a sort valve because the sort valve you set your evaporator pressure temperature that you want to run at and that maintains it usually just fine yeah, you would think we'd have it up here somewhere the guy that usually does it is on vacation and not many of the others know so it's quite a treat all right went through here and number just to make it a little easier for next time but eight is that one which also says it's a gray gray is eight <clears throat> if you look here one and three should be together under normal operation so we come up here to one and three and we check voltage and we have nothing so we flip eight the other direction and now we have 211 or yeah 211 if i can get the thing to hold right so we know that it's working off the clock clock is working it's changing position my thought was maybe we weren't getting power out to the solenoid from here if that's where it's wired at you don't really see anything in here i don't i don't know what they were up to why they did it the way they did it and i don't know why we can't find a freaking thermostat because i don't think there is one i think it's powered off of the rack back here they might shut it down when it goes into a defrost to conserve refrigerant possibly and suck it back into the rack hard to say so we have some clocks over there i just grabbed one or left over from other stores we've updated to the e2 controllers so i got one here i think it's going to work okay when you rotate this thing you can see the wheel there kicks it forward kicks it one way boom click goes a little further kicks out goes to the next spot again pushes it over clicks it in kicks it out this one here kicks that way and when you get around to it it just don't act like it was kicking back and forth so you're making major turns there it did it there it did see how long it is before it does it again so clicks on off rotate rotate see it should have kicked back on i'm still rotating bunches and bunches should not it should be on longer than it is in defrost there it was quick on and kick off but here once again you got it's like it's missing there must be a nub the nub here looks like it's a little war on one side over the other so i'm going to copy it from this one here and see if we can get that thing wired up so as long as this works we should be good as you can see here from a little bit easier to see this is your how many minutes and it's got a little prong there and it's got a prong there so it comes up that hits kicks it into defrost bam this rotates 40 minutes triggers it again kicks it out this little one right there that copper one seems to be the one that was wore out as you go a little further boom as you come down boom so the copper one would be the one that's wore out you can see it's a pretty good size chunk right there you look at this one looks like a big chunk but something's something's wore out i ain't sure what but when you watch this one go boom sometimes it does sometimes it don't i don't i don't know it just wasn't hitting we're gonna try it and see what happens so we got it back together you got to make sure you get this little piece in between there connected in there otherwise it won't continue to clock on a cross this is before my time i didn't get a lot of experience with that let's go down there and see now that we have power on eight if it's running like it should okay so we are feeding through there but unfortunately our solenoid still does not have any power we have at least dropped some of our case temperature some 
you've got some places that are definitely cooler than others. So back here, I mean, this product's all nice and freaking warm now. It's getting there, but it's still, I mean, it's definitely colder. You can tell we're getting cold all the way back to here. So we're definitely getting cold now. I'll tell you what, this thing's freaking amazing. Compared to what I had before, day and night difference. You can see such a definition that, man, you can just tell that one's colder than the other, plain as day. You can kind of tell if the fans are not doing as good as they should. Interesting, more time will tell. I finally found it. Um, it's right here. Who would have ever seen that coming, right? After yanking all these out, pulling every square ballast spot, finally found it. Now how that's gonna come out of there, I'm not real sure. All right, so I rotated it down there and it's pulling nice and hard on that, so it's working. It's definitely something to do with the thermostat. All right, so got the top piece out. There's the control. Goes into that little spot right there. Okay, I'll show you what it is. It comes down throughout hole and eventually ends up right there. Along with that case thermometer there. That thing is silver. I've never seen a sensing bulb silver. That thing's two or three years old at least. Yep. Good deal. I'm gonna go ahead and chop that and I'll pull it through with the bulb, tie it to it, pull it into position. All right, so we got that across there. This is the biggest pain in the butt I've ever seen in my life. So I was able to hook the old wire on the back of that, tape it up really good and pull it through. Total pain behind in. So we're back at 40 there. Got the bulb mounted up there, about the same place as the other one. Had to get a little destructive with some of that insulation, but I don't see anything on the thermal imager that I was picking up any heat. Figuring we've set it about 10 degrees colder than what the, the design temp is. So at 35, you'd be 10 below at a 10 degree TD. Uh, down here, we're at 35 area, 30. Depending on what you're looking at, if you look at the center conduct center spot there, we're at 53 supposedly go to the white back here in the back and we're 27 got my old-fashioned traditional here so I checked one of the other ones and they were set warmer than that okay I just heard a kick on I got up to 40 ish we may have to set it a little lower the, you remember the product is warm so I don't know it's one of those toss-ups it'd be nice if you could monitor from you know from further away but this they just don't have any of that here yeah we're at 42 might go a little bit colder it's, these stats i'd i'd rather have that on there but i'm afraid they had that off of there for a reason i could steal this one here and put it over it we're at 40 ish there i mean the whole thing is it's got an epr on it back of the rack i don't know why they're even using this it makes no sense to me but you would think you'd want to keep a constant temperature whatever so anyhow that's going to wrap this one up guys if you enjoyed the video and you want to see more like it hit the thumbs up button until next time catch you on the next one later